The media in Hollywood have been promoting semi-glutide or Ozempec as a miracle weight loss drug, but if you drill into the details, it actually turns out that use of these GLP-1 agonists, as they're called, actually enhance muscle loss, which is really not a good long-term strategy when it comes to preserving weight maintenance over time. So I want to share with you the results of a recently published sub-study of the SUSTAIN-8 clinical trial that was used to authorize via the FDA use for Ozempec for weight loss. And it's important to acknowledge that this drug is really actually not that good for causing weight loss. In fact, the visceral fat changes after 52 weeks of once weekly use of Ozempec or semiglutide is only 0.44 pounds, which is a nothing burger, my friends. If you want to pay 1200 bucks to only lose 0.4 pounds of visceral fat over the course of 52 weeks, I have a million strategies that I can help you implement right now that will cause significantly more visceral fat loss compared to this. In fact, the amount of fat that was lost at, on average in the sustain eight this was a sub-analysis where they used a DEXA scan to look at body composition changes, as you can see in these figures here, was only 7.4 pounds of fat. In contrast, let's focus on lean mass. You know lean mass is so important because when you lose weight, part of that weight loss comes from, unfortunately, if you go about it via these strategies, is loss of lean tissue, of muscle mass. Well, it turns out that over the course of 52 weeks, these people lost five pounds of muscle. This is more than 40% of the weight that's lost, which is higher on average than what you would normally see if people just diet, is coming from muscle. And that's why when you read these studies and they just focus on weight loss, and a lot of doctors are, are now promoting this drug. I see it on social media. I see it on Instagram. There's different conferences talking about the, the, the breakthrough of, of GLP-1 agonists and so forth but they just focus on body weight. That is a really poor uh, proxy for the health of your body composition. You got to focus on lean mass and, and they're comparing two different types of GLP-1 agonists, semiglutide and, and kenoglofacin. And, and these are different drugs. I think semiglutide is the one that's primarily being recommended and used and prescribed. Again, this costs up to $12,000 a year, depending upon whether or not your insurance covers it and so on. And there's a lot of side effects. And we're going to get into those stories like paralysis of the gastrointestinal tract, uh, constipation, undigested food, uh, weight regain after. I mean, the list goes on. And so there are so many different strategies that you can focus on, my friends. Resistant training should be front and center of those strategies because you need to preserve lean muscle mass while you're losing body composition. As a side note, that's why this show is brought to you by myoscience.com. We are big fans of resistance training, optimizing your training, featuring the creatine containing electrolyte sticks. This features 2.6 grams of a bioavailable form of creatine along with electrolytes that enhance the absorption of the creatine and also help to optimize your athletic performance. You can save over at myoscience.com. There's over 630 reviews on this formulation from people just like you who are using this before their workout, after their workout, or during their workout, sometime around exercise. It turns out that exercised muscle increases creatine absorption by some 37% according to studies. So optimize your athletic performance and your next workout by going to myoscience.com. Use the code podcast to save on the novel electrolyte containing creatine sticks. So let's go back to the study. Again, only 7.4 pounds of fat mass lost compared to five pounds of muscle loss over the course of a year and only 0.44 pounds of visceral fat. Not a good change in body composition. So I don't even know why doctors are recommending this, quite frankly. But it's important to acknowledge that multiple studies now show that Ozempec and semiglutide and this GLP-1 agonist cause muscle loss. Here was actually a study in Current Diabetes Reviews titled Effects of Anti-Diabetic Drugs on Muscle Mass in Type 2 Diabetes. The scientists say of the studies identified, 18 randomized controlled trials were included. In all studies, the effects of these drugs on fat-free mass were evaluated. Therefore, Fat-free mass, which is used as an alternative index of muscle mass, was included in the study. Semiglutide and all the other GLP-1 agonists that are widely prescribed showed a significant decrease in fat-free mass compared to placebo. This is not good. There's a lot of different strategies that you can implement to cause weight loss without losing fat-free mass. Again, especially only seven pounds of fat mass over the course of a year. It's really not good. I, I know people that can lose seven pounds of fat in 12 weeks without the use of any expensive drugs while also preserving muscle mass and actually gaining strength over time. So that's important to recognize. Now, what about the downsides? You know, you're not really hearing about this so much from the doctors that are promoting this, but 
Even CNN and other mainstream media outlets have articles like this titled, They Took Blockbuster Drugs for Weight Loss and Diabetes. Now Their Stomachs Are Paralyzed. Those, so this gastroparesis with this paral paralyzation of the stomach, I don't know how common this is. I, mean, I know actually some of the drug manufacturers are being sued over this and people are starting to report on this. I don't think it's a super common side effect, maybe five, 10%, but still because so many people are clamoring for this compound, it's important to acknowledge that that is not worth seven pounds of fat mass loss and five pounds of muscle mass loss and only 0.4 pounds of visceral fat. I mean, if this lost 12 pounds of visceral fat over the course of a year, I might say, okay, that side effect of having significant long-term changes in your gastrointestinal motility might be worth considering if it was 12 pounds of visceral fat, but 0.4, this is nothing. You can change your diet and lose much more than that. Dr. Sean O'Meara has been running abdominal MRIs on patients for a long time. Getting them off carbohydrates and processed food is one of the fastest ways to reduce the amount of visceral fat and, and also total fat mass in your body and also increase if you focus on prioritizing protein that is and optimizing resistance training prioritize uh, muscle so it's important to acknowledge that if you have a friend or family or you yourself have been considering taking one of these drugs it's important to acknowledge that muscle mass is actually is a common consequence of taking these medications and you don't want to lose muscle mass and and only lose a little bit of fat like if you were if the ratio was like 10 to 1 parts fat versus one part muscle loss, I could understand maybe considering this, but you're looking at it's like three, three, four and three, basically. So every four pounds you lose, you almost lose three pounds of muscle. That's not good, my friends. And so we need to acknowledge and, and reshift and reprioritize our thinking when it comes to weight loss. We did a whole nother video about the importance of muscle and preserving muscle mass when it comes to weight loss maintenance. I encourage you to check that out. We talked a lot about brown adipose tissue activation, resistance training and protein in that video and the science and the images. I will link that below. But hopefully you found this information helpful. I will share these studies in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. And let me know what you think and what you're hearing from people because you know, these studies now, this one was published in I think it was 2020. So we don't have new studies since this drug became really popularized in the past 18 months. Uh, I, I'm very curious to see what the long-term studies show uh, with people using this, these sort of, I think, quick fixes. Now, I will say that GLP-1 agonists, DPP-4 inhibitors have been used a long time for the treatment of diabetes, but not necessarily weight loss. And so I think uh, we will see more and more data coming. And as the scientific community and medical doctors better understand the importance of prioritizing lean mass while also losing fat mass, maybe they will rethink the different strategies and modalities and interventions that they're promoting and prescribing. So as always, appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.